Welcome, one and all, to Coriander Society Adventures. Our heroes are loose in the amazing city of Northport on the world of Yord, filled with mystery, intrigue, ninjas, and robots. I, Tormented by Gnomes, will be your guide in this incredible world of adventure, and I'm joined today by the incomparable Ninja Man Matt and the... What's the word that I was thinking for? I thought the word pecunious, but I'm not entirely sure that that's a word. Uh, Pause of War is here too, and I'm really excited to have <laughs> Pause of War here today. That's that's fun and exciting. Yay! Hooray for that. Um, Matt, how's life? How you doing? Well, I feel kind of bad because I'm not like the awesome Pause of War, but you know, I'm. We can't you all be me. the awesome so, Pause you know, of War, all right? There's cool. only there's only so much that we can do in this life. It's there's true. So you know, every single life. time. I go by one of those shipping containers that just says pods on the side. I point out to whoever I'm with, like, hey, my friend, my it's, friend. That's my it's friend Leo pointing right at there. the screen, right? It's the. Uh-huh. Exactly. Hey. Uh, like when you drove by a big pile of hay in Big Bear and y'all had to say, hey. And everyone's yeah. like, whoa. And it's like, oh, yeah, we drove by the hay. And like, oh, yeah, you're funny. Good for you. That's how I'm. That's about how I'm feeling today. Usually it's Tide <laughs> Pods, but. Yeah, oh, same thing. yeah, yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, tide uh, Pods. How you what? doing? What? <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, had a good long weekend, mm. and we're only working half days this week. Let's go. A sort of like a summer break, so yeah, it's good. You love to see it. You love to yeah. see it. Uh, for my part, I'm super happy. It's Tuesday. We get to play Coriander Society on Tuesday. Ooh. Yeah, big fan, big fan. All right. When last we left our heroes after toppling together the second of the two most powerful crime syndicates in the city of Northport. Our heroes said goodbye to Gaston, who realized that the chaos embroiling this city, chaos of his own doing, required full-time attention. And from the moment that his father was shot and wounded by Tobias Nash, and the city did nothing, he has taken it on himself to protect it and to see justice done where justice has no say. And so at the fantastic up the coast mansion of Mr. Lowe, they said their goodbyes and they parted ways, leaving our heroes in the city of Northport to collect their thoughts until adventure comes knocking at their door again, which it will very, very soon. So how soon? How soon? Well, you know, as soon as you've, uh, you just let me know when you're ready for adventure to come calling. All right. Because it's, 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 there's a voicemail for you. All right. Adventure awaits us. Adventure dial 10, 10, 2, 20 down the middle. It's free for you. It's cheap for them. Uh, I would like you to go ahead and take, gain the benefits of a long rest. Yeah. Cause you're able to go back. Uh, where Woo! will, John, you can go back to your office. Asana, you can go back to your lair if you'd like, depending on where you want to crash. Yeah, my lair. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll go back to the office just to make sure that things are still, you know, mm -hmm. going. Well, I mean, you've got nobody. Uh -oh. Oh, something just happened. I heard the sound on that one. Just, just <laughs> <an FBI. laughs> Fools, oh, I was... you cannot comprehend my power. Rosamon unleashes his mental prowess, assaulting the party. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, there's a Rosamon card. You had to know there's yeah. a Rosamon card. That's a thing? Always. Always and forever. Okay, Until you I, kill I have him. the alerts up. <laughs> That's the plan. That's the plan, right? Well, I mean, that is one of the things you can decide to do. Uh, you can decide, you know what? We need to go wax him. All right. No, I don't want to oh, wax him. Yeah. Him. Yeah. I mean, you guys have Senapulker is out there. Ralzamon is out there. Dr. Zorbius is still out there, and they all need to be stopped. In addition, you've received a prophecy that the Elder Evils are coming, and Northport has a year before things go really, really bad. So there's still plenty of daring do to daringly do. John, yeah, I feel like. Go ahead. Well, I think we're gonna leave uh, cats like Zorbius to the likes of the hero of the Northport, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the rest that are the the growing population of heroes that are building up uh, within the city. But definitely, Senefolker and Rausamon, That's 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 in our league. That's the kind of stuff we want to stop. Okay. Well, you might have to stop him sooner than you think, John, because you take a long rest at your hideout. 
you gain a single extra deduction dice. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. What do I get? Big An fan. extra focus point. So in addition <laughs> oh. to all of your uh, focus points recharging, you get one bonus focus point. Nice. So both of these Heck benefits yeah. last until your next long rest. Okay. I'm here for it. If only my, oh my inspiration gosh, I used so refreshed. Oh my gosh, so much inspiration. <laughs> Heavy I only firepower have two. just got played. Oh my. Your enemies brought the big guns. Oh my gosh, there's somebody what? out there with a with a bullet with our name on it. Mm-hmm. So in the next like encounter, and several enemies are gonna be packing extra firepower. That is oh, now good, because so am I. I don't like that. <laughs> I heard it that time. Yeah. All right. Oh, you you actually heard the, the sound yeah. effects? Yeah. That's, That's what excellent. I'm saying. We've been hearing it. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Let's go. You love to yeah. hear it. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to do this real quick. Boop. That's done. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, mate, I've got a quick question. Fire away. Whatever happened to uh, Samuel? Did he stay with the uh, with the Pilgrim's Progress? Mm hmm. Okay, cool. He's just flying around just the universe eating energy. Sure. Um, I get that. All right, the, the dawn rises over the city of Northport. Where do John and Asena meet? And also, John, you don't have anyone working cases at your office right now, so it's still boarded up from when Zorbius' Zorbots attacked. And Oh, like, really? Yeah, because remember they broke into your place and they stole a bunch of stuff and they tried to capture Charlie and a bunch of your notes got blown out the window, so it's boarded up Uh and the Essex Hotel has a couple of extra knee breakers around just to keep an eye on things. Yeah. But, um, okay. Other than that, well, no changes and nobody's pursuing your active leads as far as you know. Yeah. Well, because I have my uh, I have my finest working on a different uh, mm -hmm. case in another universe. So, exactly. you know, there's that. that. Happens. Where will. Uh, uh, yeah, we left him there. <laughs> yeah. Ben and Charlie are trying to free one of John's friends from being wrongfully accused of poisoning the, the uh, king. I did it. It was a scene. Of, well, that's no good. The confession isn't going to help unless you go back there. <laughs> hey, actually, I, I do have a thing that I want to do. John would have, uh, John would have asked Asena uh, bright and early, crack of dawn, uh, before people start coming out in, uh, in mass uh, to meet him at uh, a very particular cemetery. Uh, before they get going with the rest of their day. And when she arrives uh, at the destination that John had uh, indicated, she sees that John has uh, has dug up the grave of a one foster talent. What? And he wants her to use her crown of talking to dead people. And he wants her to tell him that we've avenged his death and solved the angel killer murders and give his spirit a sense of of peace and what is that word uh not just closure uh closure closure yeah but there's a there's a better word for it uh and it's escaping me at this time but definitely give that old uh investigator who was always on to things and had his tinfoil hat that ended up getting him in a pot that was uh that was too hot to handle and uh just give him that sense of peace. Dang. Okay. <laughs> uh, you asked what we wanted to do. That's what oh, I want to totally do. That's totally legit. I'm here for it. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, so, like, usually when I talk to dead people, like, I don't know them. And, and now I feel like <laughs> I kind of know him. I don't, I've ne I'd never met him when he was alive. But, like, I've known his dead body for a long time. You know, you have known his dead body for a long time. That's right. <laughs> He's like the first dead body I met here. Well, here, so, to like, specify he, here. Yeah. 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 Vindication, by the way, was the word I was looking for. Vindication. All right. All right. All right. Unless it was like, like, if you don't count the ones that like I. The first one here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh. uh 
so, so okay so just let me get this straight you want me to tell him don't worry we took down all the angel killers and you didn't die in vain i mean yeah that's the that's the crux of it if you'd like i can write something up and you can just read it off but i figure you know this was important to you this was the very first uh instance where both you and our our recently uh well, I recently absconded uh, Gaston. Had, you came through my doors and changed my uh, my life for the better, and this was the reason why. And I figured you, as much as I, would likely want to uh, to close this chapter of your life, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, it's just... Does he care? He's dead. Well, I mean, first of all, it's kind of a moot point. I mean, you're right. If he's dead, I mean, maybe it'll give you a sense of closure, maybe. You know, you I, found this person. They were important enough to track down. And now that you've basically resolved what they were able to do, you now have the means of communicating with them. And wouldn't people have always said if they had a chance to have one more day with someone, one more moment, uh, or if they could change the past, you know, we can't do any of that, but we can grant this poor soul at least a measure of, uh, of closure from something that was very important to them. And uh, I know it would help me. A great deal, and I, I would hope it would do at least something for you. What do you really want to know from him? I mean, if you want, you can give me the crown, and I can do it, <laughs> but that's kind of your thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, like, you're going to have me talk to this guy just for his own and our own peace of mind and not ask him any questions about information that he might have? I mean, I technically already dug him up, so it'd be kind of a waste if we didn't at least, you know, <laughs> do this thing before sticking him back in the ground. Plus, also, the sun's coming up, and I'm pretty sure that uh, this is very illegal. You think so? Oh, I, I, in fact, I know so. We've probably well, got about a good five minutes. I don't know about any laws around here. Well, how about this? Just introduce yourself. Be very brief, but be very earnest in assuring him that you brought his killers to justice and that he was on the right trail all along and we were able to not only solve the angel killer murders, but stop it from happening to anyone else. And I'm sure that'll go a long way. Okay. I believe in you, Asana. You've got this. I'm going to mess it up somehow. You're not. She's going to put the crown on. Uh, good morning, Mr. Foster Talon. What? Hello. Uh, sorry to disturb you. My name is Asana, but I have a message from another dimension. Who sent you? Are you with the characters? The Omelons? The truth will get out. I swear it. You know, I'm technically with the Carringtons, but not really. Like, that's kind of like a side thing. But um, actually, John Carmichael sent me. John Carmichael? What is John? John sent. John sent. John sent. You have to warn him. It's Sunja. Yeah, we we found that out. We found that out real good. Did you get her? You know, technically we met before, but um, your body was dead in the museum, and Sunja was like at the top of the roof. Did you get her and the others? There's lots of them. It's all, it's all part of a ritual. So we didn't get her then, but the whole reason why I'm talking to you today is so you know we killed all the... Okay, maybe not all of them. All of them? We killed most closure, of the Closure, Closure. And it's all over, and you did not die in vain. Did any of them survive? Um, no, 
Oh, no, it's all taken care of. Roll a deception check for me, please. <laughs> I never bothered converting him to fifth edition because he was dead. Foster <laughs> Talon was uh, a, an expert ace reporter who's that's a natural 20. <laughs> hey! I have a one in deception. <laughs> you got a natural 20, so I'm going to allow it. John, I said. I will, and and you're welcome. And now you can rest in peace, and we'll put your body back in its grave. What is is there something else you want to do? No, no. I want to rest. rest, rest. But I can already hear it calling from the dark. And all around the graveyard, for a brief moment, you hear the scratching of skeletal fingers at stone and wooden coffins. And a whisper flows through like a morning mist weaving between the headstones and along the mausoleums and the gargoyles. And it sends a chill down your spine. Uh, yes, Matt. Does John hear this, or is this yes. all in? Yes. Oh, okay. As this is happening, John looks around. I say, no, what's happening? I don't know. What did he say? The angels were calling to it, and it heard them. If even one of them survived, it would continue reaching out to pull it closer and closer. A world born dead. Um, what, what is his name? I don't know its name. I can just feel it in my bones. Okay. Can I feel it? Um, you cannot feel it at this time, Asena. Alrighty. Um. So every everything should be fine then, because we killed them all, right? So like, or or is this this gonna be a thing, even if we didn't kill them? Oh. I feel it reaching out for us, still searching for us, searching for death, searching for death. Death? Are are you are you saying that um, killing the angel killers is not enough? If you stop them all, we may have a chance. They may not find us. They may pass us by. But they planned to call it with death, mass death. Mass death. Yes. Maybe in like a year from now, maybe. Soon now, now to call it to bring it faster, faster. You know what? I think I'm gonna double check and just you know really make sure that all of them angel killers are dead. If even one survived, they will go to cause untold slaughter, and it will shine out through the void, and it will find us. You know, while you're here, do you have any other tips that might be helpful? Don't trust the government. They're putting something in the water. In the water? Yes, they're putting something in the water. It's all those people over at Fomico Chemicals. It's in the fluoride. That's good to know. Can I make an insight check? Because I, I know how much of a crack he is as well as a tinfoil. Well, I don't remember if you're party to this conversation at all, Matt. Are you? I'm not. I'm all, No, I'm going off of what she is saying within the water. Oh, that's good to know. And knowing that she's talking to Foster Talon. Okay. Is Asena being um, earnest 
with saying that's good to know or is she being facetious oh yeah she believes him yeah right. she absolutely believes it all right then john you can get that read that's for free no dice required okay <laughs> uh okay well um i'm getting kind of creeped out by all of these bodies around that can all hear me so i think it's time to go Okay, that was creepy. Hurry up! Done? D put 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 the dirt back. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, John goes ahead, and as uh, as well as he can, he he returns Foster Talon back uh, to the hopefully undisturbed sleep he'll continue to have if we can avert this impending crisis. And when he's done, he uses uh, his you know, very basic uh, warlock magic to clean himself off from the literal grave dirt. And he'll go ahead and pocket just a bit of it, considering that can be a very particularly powerful reagent. Can't hear you. Plus one XP. Plus one XP and add it to your inventory. Foster Talon's grave dirt. <laughs> so how did it go? Um, that one was really creepy. I didn't think about how, um, there was more than one dead body all around me. Um, I kind of lied to him. Uh, in, in, you told me to like make him at ease and tell him that all the angel killers were dead. Uh, but apparently it's really bad that if, they, if they were still alive. Okay, so we need to make sure that we track down the last two. Yeah, something about... We know that at least one of them went to Kemet. Something like... Um, something about um, what? Something was coming to get them, or they were calling to something really spooky and scary-like. You mean the dead? Yeah. The dead, but he didn't know what the name was. Atropus. Um, uh, he didn't thing. say that. No, I'm, that's what I'm saying. He's talking about that moon that I had seen in that young girl's dreams. The one that Gaston was so earnest in saving. The one that the we spent so much moon. time and went to Lacunas in order to help out. So not the spider moon. She saw it while she was while she was under. Yeah, that thing. So that's got to be it. That's the thing we're trying to stop, Asena. The one that's going to be destroying your world in a year's time. Yeah, I think I forgot he about that He was a crackpot, one. but he's right. It's all connected. It's in the water. <laughs> you forgot about it. <laughs> There's a lot in the water, but uh, probably not relevant to our current predicament. It seems no, he said so. Should... He said that the fluoride in the water is making everybody crazy. Well, that aside, uh, that's a very mundane worry compared to what we're currently investigating. I thought this guy was like the best of the best. You said so yourself. Well, I mean, I'm the best of the best, but well, actually, technically, Calipi is the best of the best. Uh, but, you know, we were the top three for sure. Um. In any, in any regard, in any regard, any case, regardless, we should probably head back to Wounds and plan our next move. We have precious little time, and we'll need to make sure that we're utilizing it properly. We'll need to make sure that we gather our allies, and I think we need to head to the jungles, not just to put a stop to what's happening with the Cenefolger cyst, but you showed a pretty great interest in finding out more about who or what you truly are. And I think that we'll need to head back to where it all happened to really get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, is that more pressing than the not spider moon and the spooky stuff? <laughs> not spider moon. Um, well, 
I think it, I think it all ends up coming out in the wash, as it were. We'll need to make sure that we go and investigate the center bulk cyst in order to get to the bottom of what's happening with this Atropus elder evil thing. And while we're there, we might as well took, kill two birds with one stone and uh, figure out what we can about you. Unless oh, you don't want to. No, it's fine. I mean, find out my dark heritage and become like super powerful and all these answers and then finally know everything about your life. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah, you kind of need to be able to punch a god when the time comes. So I feel like whatever we can, you know, uncover about your connection to this great wisdom dragon, the silver dragon that can travel the cosmos and is able to affect the course of multiple histories across who knows how many worlds. Uh, yeah, bringing that kind of power to bear could be an absolute boon for us. I think I could punch a god right now. You could absolutely punch a god, Asena. However, we want to make sure it can't punch you back. And I think that's going to be paramount as part of this discovery. It would be cool to teleport easy. Yes, absolutely. Also, and John uh, kind of opens up his coat in order to uh, display his enormous magical gun, Kronsaka. Even though Island Spain has been able to help me move my way through these adventures without my full magical repertoire. I need to do a little bit of soul searching myself. And I think that this pact with Tiamat is going to only help so much, but I'm going to have to try to see what I can do to get my mojo back. And I don't know what that's going to entail if I'm going to have to take a new approach, but I'll need to find a way to, uh, to fill that hole in myself ever since I transferred my magical power to Hara in recompense for what occurred between us. There's this gaping wound inside of me. I can feel my power is still there. I just don't have access to it. Or rather, you know when you carry a large vessel and you put food, water, whatever it is, that briefcase I have, that briefcase that goes to a completely separate dimension and it can hold countless items from across all the various worlds we've been to imagine that but we dumped all the stuff out of it and it's empty it has potential but i can't put anything in there that's what it feels like and it's awful and i feel like i either need to find a way to put something back in there or just close it up forever so i can just stop thinking about it like a phantom limb you know what i mean not really. I mean, if you emptied out your briefcase, then you could put things back in it because there's nothing in there. Well, that was a metaphor. I was using my briefcase as a metaphor for the hole in myself. Oh. Uh, which, again, that's a metaphorical hole, not an actual hole within me. It's a, you know, a, hey, let's go get some food. I think this will be a lot easier to discuss over, uh, <laughs> over breakfast. <laughs> As they're walking to like go to wound, mm -hmm. she's like, "Well, so if the hole's in your body, then we can find someone to stitch it up." But again, circling back to the original, <laughs> and they kind of just keep going back and forth mm. as they hop in the cab and go across the bridge to the western side of town, just by the canals near Aylberg. Over the wound. You both got copies of the newspaper. You've got coffee. You've got your steaks, everything. The news articles are talking about the continued war in Kemet and how the Omelons are within like 20 kilometers of this big, important city that has the greatest library in all the world. But they've all been sort of bogged down there for months. There's been artillery fights and tank fights, and the desert is just smoldering with chaos. Um, all sorts of stuff. So the commissions are still holding the line, but the Omelon attack continues to intensify. Uh, there was a major gas explosion in Tide Point recently as well. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ooh. So not too, that not too far away from, I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Not too Keller, far right? from here and not too far from the place that you guys blew up. Yeah. Keller Industrial. That's yeah. uh... what the place formerly known as Keller Industrial. That's I mean, been that's a, kind of uh, good a hotbed of activity recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has. So, yeah. 
Mayor Dodson blames the aldermen of Aylberg because despite the fact that Aylberg is a burned down, you know, wreck, it still technically has governance. And so uh, Dodson is saying that if Aylberg's problems aren't contained, he'll take executive action on it. But anyways, that's just the background as you're sitting down, having your, your food, so on and so forth. Uh, you also have an unread text from Hara. Okay, John takes a look at it. Found something weird. Talk when we can. Oh, goody. John's going to go ahead and messenger back. Mm -hmm. Just where? She group texted you and Asena, by the way. Does Asena have a phone? I don't think Asena has a phone because Gaston right. had a phone. All right, all right. Um, we can get Asena a phone, but I don't even know if Asena would have the patience to use one. Asena, do you want a phone? She, no. Okay, all right. Let's see what else we got. Behold, <laughs> <that's the song. laughs> Limit break. The more damage you take, the more powerful you become. You know, I feel like that should be in the action cards, but whatever. So. Ooh, that's cool. Next time you're in battle, whichever one of you starts taking damage can use a limit break to become oh, cool. more and more powerful as time goes on. <laughs> well, this is great because apparently there's a bunch of enemies out there with, uh, <laughs> with our name. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so once we start taking all this damage, we'll, we'll unlock our full potential. I love it. Uh, Mate, just to, to clarify, uh -huh. uh, it's been a while since we've been around these storylines, and my notes are uh, ransom and uh, piecemeal, to say the best for it. Understandable. Um, I, un I understand that uh, Draken, uh, our newly aligned uh, individual, is mm -hmm. currently with Natalie Adams, and his cover is not blown. Mm -hmm. They are not traveling to Zokia. That was a smokescreen. Mm -hmm. um, and then they hired the Sky Pirates, uh, Max Wreckage, or... I know Max Wreckage, Wreckage and Maisie Mayhem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maisie Mayhem, uh, that we're going to go to Kemet. Have mm -hmm. we heard anything about that? Has he been able to get in contact with us to let him know what they've been up to? Uh, no, actually. You have lost contact with him. He hasn't responded for a while. If we do a little bit of digging, have we been able to find out that anything has occurred in regards to uh, Kemet, especially regarding the city of uh, Pharaohs? So is there a news article? You could roll an investigation update? check if you want to. Um, I could I roll an investigation? I know. Check? I know you're very good at investigation. Is that go ahead and do it? Yeah, go ahead and do it. OK, perfect. I, I thought you were leading up to something else. <laughs> oh, my. And enjoy a magic item from Treasure Table X. The fattest. Uh, like the fattest of loot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this, first off, a 23 investigation. So, Dragon DeVry got separated from Natalie Adams when the plane he was on got shot down. They were The Sky Pirates betrayed them. Their plane got shot down. Draken parachuted out into the middle of the desert, in the middle of oh. the battle lines between the two armies, and he doesn't know oh, where Natalie no. is. Oh no! He, he is track. He's trying to track her into uh, the capital city as best as he can, but he doesn't know where she is at the moment. But yeah, he parachuted out. All right, the fattest of loot. Um, so we're gonna call this because this is like our third card played. Um, we're gonna go ahead and roll pods. Roll one d one hundred, please. Okay. <clears throat> 1d100. Oh my. Mm -hmm. 19. Ooh. Um, Matt, pick a scroll, a spell of fourth level that would be useful for Asena. A scroll of what level? Fourth level. A fourth level spell. You get one fourth level spell that you can either have as a spell scroll or as a spell tattoo, as long as Asena gets it. Dimension Door. She loves teleporting. Great. You have a tattoo of Dimension Door, Asena. Go ahead Dimension and add that to door. your inventory. Uh, and while we're here, oh, oh my gosh. Another one. Flash step. Wow. Okay. So the next Dude, fight is going to be full love anime, these anime cards. Uh, Dude, I love these anime cards. You'll gain an immediate reaction to move up to your speed. 
and gain Heck advantage yeah. on any attacks. So the two of you have a flash step to spend and you have a limit break to spend. And you got a tattoo of Dimension Door. So you got that going for you, which is nice. Heck yeah. So Hara sends you, well, there's no GPS here because this world has no satellite system. Wait, Wait so she doesn't have a phone as well? I thought she had a phone as well. No, she has a phone. She just can't drop a pin on a map and send it to you because there's no GPS. Um, oh. There's magic. Like the, it, the, it's basically direct texting because there's no satellite system or, or cell yeah, tower. Yeah, yeah, Darcy Street. Let well, me... yeah, but uh, technically, couldn't John start working on fabricating a GPS since he has that camera that falls yeah. around everywhere and you he can, can do just that. start... You know, make a metaverse version of Northport. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. The address is on Darcy Street. John knows where that is. He has to. Yeah, it's in Curtis Town, um, not the nicest part of town. Uh, but you would also know that beneath Darthi Darcy Street, a network of sewer tunnels leads to a richly appointed throne room where Cassius, the beggar prince, holds court. I see it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's across town, but not too far. Yeah. And that's so, where she wants to meet? That's where she wants to meet. Oh, goody. Okay. All right. Well, Sana, are you? Let's quit casting spells in chat. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to put the Dimension Door in there. Well, if, if you drag, uh, if you search for Dimension Door in the compendium yeah. and then drag it over to your character sheet, that's the easiest way to do it my internet just w did not want to do that oh i get it i get it <laughs> i like hey. to blame my internet ignore me ignore me uh, ignore me there's probably a voice in here you wait 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 wait. i'm not i'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> okay so is there anything else you want to discuss or do while you're still at wound yeah uh well john was gonna inquire if saying is okay with uh uh oh well oh, yeah, we'd be good I still got you. With what? Okay, cool. I still got you. So Ahara wants us to meet her uh, in what's basically Hobo Town. They want they want us to go to see Cassius the Beggar Prince. It seems. Cassius. Cassius. So I can only imagine. Just to bring you up to speed, Pods. Do you remember when you met uh, when you fought in the sewers and you met Big Sue? The alligator, uh -huh. and you met yeah. the extra, the kid who can like use his powers to make newspaper headlines happen. My he, favorite yeah. boy. He was working for Cassius when you met him, and mm. then you got him, made him stop working for Cassius, and brought him to the academy. Well, we gave him a better life for sure. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for context. It sounds as though, considering how much care Hara gives into her students, if she's going to be having us meet. It's likely that Cassius has come a Colin and she wants to protect Extra, which did, did we ever find out? Did Extra have a a real name? And this is both to, to Asena and to, and to DM Joe. Uh, Extra has never revealed his real name. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, I totally don't want to see Hara. <laughs> I get you, I get you. Okay. Cool. So it sounds like that'll be our next move then. Uh, aside from that, I was thinking about uh, sending a couple of runners and getting a plan for us to head to Zoquia. But honestly, I wonder if we should track down Natalie Adams first and check on Draken. Maybe we should just make a stop in Kemet. Because if we're able to head there, and since we know where Natalie is, at least has been recently, we can track her down and mark one of the two loose ends from the angel killers off our list. Remember, the other angel killer is in the custody of Department 7. That was my other question, was who the other one was. It was Natalie Adams, and who was the other one? Uh, Charlotte Carver, the famous movie star. It was Carver. Okay. Carver's the other surviving angel. And, and they got taken in by the, the police the department? department captured her. Yeah, they figured out how Not, to... Wait, Department 7 or the police department? Department 7. Good. Okay, cool. Yeah. Never mind. We should take care of... Okay. We help Hara, and then we take care of that while we're here, and then we go to Kemet, and then we go to Zokia. Does that sound okay to you, Asana? As long as we're not going to the police department, I'm good with that. You might have a thing or two to say about spines and brains. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we're not going to the police department. No, no, no. If, they, if they're with Department 7, I should be able to just hit up Hank and... Uh, and he can give us a hand. 
figure out what who's they department had been seven again? From her, and is that pause asking or Asena asking? Asena. I'm not in the room. Asena asks John what uh, p department. Oh, seven sorry, is. I didn't have that clarified. It's my apologies. Um, yeah, uh, Department Seven. That was uh, Hank McCarthy, the person that I spent quite a lot of time impersonating when we first came here. Effectively, uh, they're the magical police of Northport. They're the ones that I ended up uh, acquiring these magical really nice cuffs police. from that we were able to help shut down Mr. Lowe with. Yeah, anytime there's uh, there's weird stuff that goes bump in the night, anytime superheroes get out of control or Dr. Zorbius comes to to mess stuff up, uh, Department 7 are the uh, the secretive organization that is employed uh, by Northport in order to keep that stuff on the down low. Effectively, they're the Coriander Society, but for Yord is the way to look at it. So hard doesn't like them. I mean... Most of the students, as far as I know, don't seek to step out of line. They're they're vigilantes, but they're helpful. So uh, the, Department 7 does work with authorized uh, supers. So I would assume that they get along decently. Already. Well, where do they live? They live in the, uh, what is it, the McCulloch building? Yeah, the yeah there's McCulloch a big building, building downtown. Downtown. Mm-hmm. It's the tallest. I'm looking at my map to see if there's a McCulloch building here. I don't know if it's on the map, but I can give you a description of it in just a moment when I pull up world. I thought it was near the financial district. Yeah, it is, is near right? the financial district. It's in New I'm pretty sure it's in Newton. Yep. The Commonwealth Government Building has its offices at McCulloch Place, a nearly featureless black skyscraper, just a block away from the Pinnacle Building. Most of the upper floors are heavily guarded and off limits to the public. The Commonwealth Investigative Department, the CID, and other agencies with law enforcement roles have extensive offices here. The Pinnacle Building is taller, but the McCulloch Building casts a longer shadow. Yes, I recall. The Pinnacle, that is where uh, Carrington, right? Yes, the Carrington... Um, Future Tomorrowland. Oh right, yeah, so that's that's right down the street from us. Hey, that's uh, tomorrow would you town's mind over moving... here. How's it what now? Oh yes, no, no, I, that's 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 where the HQ. Carrington's is penthouse building. is it in the Pinnacle Bank building, if I recall correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah oh. exactly. Uh, perfect. There we go. Very good, very good. Yeah, so we're 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 just a hop, skip, and a jump from there. Uh, John's gonna text Tara back now? Question mark. Yeah, found something weird. Magic. Heading over now. Actually, John's going to hit the little uh, the little buzzer. Oh, I didn't get one of those. Darn it. John's <laughs> not going to hit the buzzer. <laughs> you want the CST, uh, CST voice, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see what <laughs> magic I can work. Uh, okay, yeah. I think we should go ahead and uh, head on over then. Did you get enough to eat? We can always take a doggy bag out of here if we need to. I seen a steak is gone. <laughs> I'm going to take, take that as a yes. <laughs> just look down over at her food for the first time. There's just a puddle of, of juice and it's been that way for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. And She'll get like here. wipe her hands uh -oh. on her clothes. Oh, goodness. Okay, I feel like we're getting jumped on the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's well. Yeah, that's happening. Oh, no, that's happening. Um, So you're going to hop. You're, sorry. Go ahead. You were wiping your, your hands and nothing bad is going to happen at all. Yeah, I was going to make an emotional moment. But the car got in the way. What the heck's happening here? A uh, cataclysm, apparently. Matt, could you roll 1d10, please? Uh, No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. No, I, I want to hear it. What's what's the emotional nope, moment? Nope. Screw the cards. Sorry, chat. Chat first. fucked with it. It's over now. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Sorry, chat. Uh, that would be an eight on the cataclysm scale, by the way, mate. Copy that. <laughs> All right. So I need to have the mute button so we can just temporarily mute for scenes and then unmute the uh, resume <laughs> cards. Uh, apologies, pods. <laughs> You're fine. 
I'm here for it. I like uh, snarky pods. Yeah, I'm assuming you're just going to keep that to yourself, huh? Uh, Wait, what? Whatever for now, Joe just looked up. For now. For now. Oh, yeah, right. I was going to say, I, I was waiting for a description that ever came. Thank you for, for reminding me. Yeah. Uh, minions of Ralzamon and a Cataclysm, and you rolled an eight, which is a volcanic eruption. Uh, excuse? How do we keep getting volcanoes? Okay, when's the last volcano that you had? We rolled another Cataclysm, and you said there's no volcanoes in the area, and we re-rolled it to, like, some kind of great big army or something. I think it was back on Lagunas. I think that, yeah, well, that's, you ended up getting invaded by the spider, the space spiders. No, I know, no, so but I, I, I have yeah, a solution yeah, yeah. for the volcanoes. The people have asked for a volcano. The people are going to get a volcano. I know exactly how this is going to go down. Let's make our way over to Dar uh, Darcy Street, where absolutely nothing Ralsmon related is going to happen first, shall As we? As we're en route, John's going to go ahead and just uh, try and see as I get closer if he can ping uh, R on the radio. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, is this thing still working? Come in, Hara. John, hey. Hi, Asena. Hi. I mean, hey! <laughs> so... Have you, uh, have you felt anything weird since we've been, uh, we've been in town? I feel like something's, like, just hanging over our heads, watching over our every move. There's a lot of things hanging over our heads. Is this, yeah. you, this couldn't wait until you got here? Well, no, I just wanted to make sure this thing worked. I haven't used it since we got stone left, so. Yeah, yep, this is your tech demo, still working. Okay, very good, thanks. See you soon, Asana. Goodbye. All right. Uh, the two of you take a cab because I still don't think either of you own a car, right? No, I usually end up carjacking people. <laughs> That's how we get around. <laughs> Just GTA rules, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like there's, uh, you know, there's, there's only so many and they'll eventually find their way back to where they belong. Mm -hmm. Okay. You make your way across town uh, over the various assorted... Where would you'd have to go? Yeah, you have to go down here and then go through Tide Point, past the scene through Aylberg, past the scene as Lair. The cabbie's like, You sure you want me to drive through here? The scene goes, It's fine. And all the way through this isn't this isn't our, our our friendly neighborhood cabbie, is it? No, 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 that's only special oh. occasions. Okay, okay. You make your way through the industrial across the bridge through the industrial district of Dockside. Uh, the smoldering ruins of Mercury City Hospital still lie in the distance. A reminder of the Army of the Eclipse's attack months ago. And you arrive near the Curtis Town tenements. Curtis Town. One of the poorest neighborhoods in the city. If you walk here at night, you'll hear a dozen languages. If you walk here in the day, you'll hear a dozen languages. If you walk here at night, you'll hear screams in a dozen languages. And over an unassuming area where the ramshackle buildings are almost leaning in towards each other and you there's there's trash in the streets but you can also smell delicious cooking from a dozen different cultures people making their way in a city that is trying to grind them down and uh asana you can have inspiration oh yeah go ahead Thanks. and add that to your character sheet that's you good. see running low hara wearing a full raincoat leaned up against one of the old crumbling brick buildings. John? Asena? Ara? Asena? <laughs> What's so funny? It's been an interesting morning. It's just good to see you, that's all. And I think it's about to get more interesting. What are we... Uh... So but before he um, uh, announced his permanent residency, Gaston asked me to look in on Extra's old buddy. And as somebody who oh. takes very seriously the welfare of the students at my school, I decided to pay the beggar prince a visit. And uh, How'd that go? I couldn't find him, John. What? Mm hmm. Cassius, he's not home? No, he's home. 
He's warded. Warded. What do you mean? Like he's invisible? He's got guards and wards going on down there. And private sanctum spells. It's scry proof. And it's got disorientation magic going on. He sent one of his little, one of his winos to come up here and talk to me. Said, oh, I'm so glad for my wayward lost child who's going on now to live a life of, of education and comfort. It's all I want. But you have to understand that I was that it was a terrible loss. The the alligator is now a huge threat to us and extra put food on a lot of, of my children's plates. So obviously I'd be happy to leave him alone in exchange for proper compensation. He wants 167,000. Really? Commonwealth. Yeah. Is that a lot? Okay. It's like uh, 1600 gold. Not for me. Um, <laughs> so it's the principle of the matter. Exactly. I figured that I would go down and give him a piece of my mind directly. Those are spells, John. That's not powers. This isn't a gifted. That's magic down there. That's what I was going to ask. He never had access to that. Not as far as I know, but I've never, it's not like I've ever met the guy. So aside from what you've described, you didn't encounter any kind of, uh, let's say, less welcoming traps down there. Just disorienting so far? Mm Mm-hmm. It's a standard set of spells. Uh, fills the corridors with fog. Whenever you take a direction, there's a 50% chance that you go in the opposite direction. I didn't want yeah, to yeah. bust out the real chops to cut through this because I figured I could use an uh, investigator as I, and you're real good at punching things. So, Okay, I mean, yeah, good call. But I... I sorry, I, I'm happy that you call this in. I truly am, but mm-hmm. I feel like this would be an easy, an easy flex for you to just tear through that and show them what's what. I mean, there's not even any eyes down there. You could go full you. Yeah, but you guys just did in Mr. Low. True, yeah. That's three kingpins. Wait, that's, that got around already? I have my sources. I talked to Gaston. He walked, he told me. That tracks, that tracks, yeah. Yeah, I'm up to speed. But look, I just, one way or another, I'm going to resolve this to the satisfaction that will protect my students. Uh, I wanted to give you the option of being involved before I go down there and kill the third major crime leader in this city. I don't really care so much about that nonsense, but I figured that the two of you might have a vested interest. Plus, there's magic at work. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I I mean, I I have no love for Cassius or his ilk, so, uh, I mean, aside, of course, from the, the kids he watches over, but, I mean, that's kind of a... He's not really doing that out of the kindness of his heart. They're tools, which is unfortunate, but at least he helps in whatever way he can. So, no, I appreciate that, Hara. Thank you. Discretion is a better part of valor, as they say. And uh, John looks over at Asena. I don't know. Kind of going through this mystery, uh, just the two of us, my brains and her brawn. I think we could sort this out. And if it turns out that we that we can't, you're right up here and you know, that's his, uh, that's his loss. If he's not willing to, to accept treaty with us. Oh, we're negotiating. I figure you should at least figure out where this magic is coming from. Oh, I just thought we were going to kill things. Well, there's going to be plenty of things to punch down there. Trust me. One, one way or to- another, figure out where this magic is coming from. And if you come to a solution involving extra, great. If not, call me. I'll come to a solution. But just to clarify, you're going to take off after this. Yeah. Oh, I figure I'll hang around. I won't go far. Just to, just to keep an eye out. Where are you going to go? You don't want to just come with? I, well, I was going to, and then it sounded like you wanted to go with the two of you. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I think this is, no, no, trust me. I'd, I'd rather have you there if we're going to, if, if, you know, there's, there's I'm coming no two down with you. Yeah, let's all have Perfect. a, let's all have a chat with the beggar prince of Northport, shall we? I think that sounds great. Uh, all right. John goes over to wherever uh, nearby entrance he assumes is the, uh, the way down. To Sewer the entrance. Door and, it's just a manhole. Yeah. John uh, scrapes open the manhole and kind of after you. And, you know, indicates the two of them. All right. Does the Santa go first or does the Santa let Hara go first? 
I'll go first. All right. Asena drops down, doesn't even need the ladder, just shoof, yeah. down into the depths. Hara follows shortly thereafter. Asena, are you proficient in the survival tool or the survival skill? Mm. She's got a shotgun. Does that count? Maybe. That is, it will help with your survival, yes. Go ahead. I mean, and, it's a seven. Does that count as proficient? It's a good number. Why don't you roll a survival check to track through the sewers? And then, John, I'll have you roll. Nice, a 17. I'll have you roll an investigation check. So, Asena's on the hunt in full beast mode. John is, uh, he's got the, let's see if we can find any clues. Got the magnifying glass out. John does take the ladder, by the way. <laughs> yes, John takes the ladder. Okay. So between the two of you, you realize that there is a Those reason. playing at home, by the way. That was a 32 investigation. Oh. Thank, thank, thank you. Noted. <laughs> it was As a the, big number. I like big number go high. Big number go up. As you make your way down into the twisting network of Northport's sewer system, which was built long, long ago, you do, in fact, encounter a mysterious fog that makes it difficult to proceed. You can't see any further than 10 feet in front of you. And every time that you reach a passageway, I would like uh, Asena to roll 1d100, please. Okay. Are we reaching a passageway right now? You are reaching a passageway right <laughs> now. Rolling. 28. Okay. Uh, you enter the passage and you emerge and bump into John, who is right behind you. Oh, uh, wait a minute. How the hell? Um, did... Okay, no, wait a minute. If we're going to be doing this, we all need to stay very close together. Yeah, why did you come behind us? How did you... It's a spell. Exactly. We should what all spell? technically be within arm's this reach fog? because if any one of us... Yeah, she's going to explain it. This fog, it's all magic. There's a, a protective spell on here. Judging by what I've sussed out, someone's been recasting this for almost a year, every single day. And when they hit a year, it becomes permanent. This spell puts permanent. defenses and confusing fog, and it makes it so you could turn around a corner and then get reversed and go back out the exact same direction. Well, how... How close are we to a year? That's the thing. I can't tell exactly how many times it's been cast, but it has been almost a year. Uh, let me see if I can't just... Um... And she focuses her magical energy and she casts Dispel Magic. And that's a Charisma check. Ooh. Dirty 20. She lightning crackles around her hands and her eyes glow. She rips into the air itself and then tears the spell apart and the fog fades away. However, as you continue to navigate your way through, the next time that you have to go up a ladder, it's full of webs, spider webs, sticky, thick spider webs. Yeah. Uh, do you wait? John has sight beyond sight. Give me just a second. Oh, no, it's just darkness. Hey, uh, Hara, can you make with the detect magic? Are these uh, mundane webs? Or they no, this is part of the spell. Every single staircase yeah, and ladder in the area. Uh, fortunately, the solution is, has either of you got a light? Yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking. And uh, John goes ahead and produces one. All right. Burn away. Um... Could I get... No, with John, with your investigation check, you also discovered there's a door as you get closer and closer to the heart of the area. There is a door that is protected by an illusion, an illusion of smooth wall. I'm just letting you cover that. Asana leads the track straight to it. Your 32 finds it, but it's arcane locked. Oh, perfect. Hey, also, by the way, while we're moving through this area, mate, mm -hmm. John takes out an ornate brass candle holder okay. that sheds magical light in a 10-foot square around them mm -hmm. that light reveals the intricacies of devices both magical and mundane so we get advantage on intelligence Awkward investigation and wisdom perception checks in order to <laughs> notice and identify traps secret doors 
uh, or identifying constructs. So did you did you steal that from the dream? Was that another dream object, or was that <laughs> yes? Because I know you've had that for ages, and I've been every single time we go somewhere, I'm like, I want to use, <laughs> use it. I want to use it. I want to use it. Use it again? And no. yeah. All right. Also, mate, I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to cause it to conceal all of us within its light. If it is a construct or an undead, until I dismiss the effect uh, or the candles are extinguished, mm -hmm. we uh, all constructs and undead have a uh, disadvantage on their perception checks to locate us. Nice. Very nice. And then how much light does that give Please off? note, though, that if a creature has magical resistance, such as like a devil, it's unaffected by this effect. And how much light does that give off? 10 foot radius. So as long as we all stay within arm's reach, like we're trying mm -hmm. to. And then how much should light? Be. 10 foot for the hiding. And then how much light? 20? It's just a 10 foot radius. Oh, okay. It just, as far as I know, it doesn't give off regular. It only gives off a magical light in a 10 foot radius. Interesting. Okay. Unless you say otherwise. No, that's fine. It's a, it's a nice weird little magic item. I'm fine with that. Okay. Last but not least, you pass, as you get closer and closer, you can start to hear muffled conversation. What I just did is completely useless. Let me try again. You start By the to way, hear... any secret doors or anything like that while we're moving our way through here? Uh, there are no secret doors, but there are hidden doors that you're able to find. I'm sort of abstracting this. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. The last thing that happens is as you're about to go through the final passage, all of you hear a voice in your head saying, turn back. There's nothing for you here. I need all of you to roll wisdom saving throws, please. Dirty 20. 22. 22. And Hara got a 13. All right. Give me a moment here. John looks to uh, Asena once Matt's done coughing. <laughs> Hara turns around and starts walking back the other way. Hara? Uh, Say Nick. What? Can I pull Can on you Hara? Tell her to come back? <laughs> yeah, roll an opposed strength check against Hara. Who is a dragon? That's a stealth check. That's a wrong one. Uh, you are yeah, a ninja. I'd like to introduce now. you. Ninja mode. You have a dragon. Activated. We we have a Hulk. So you know. <laughs> a fifteen. God, All right. That's... You are able to stop her. She sort of looks at you and shakes her arm. Where are you going? I'm leaving. How Hara, about we don't that leave? The, that's a spell. We all I heard mean, it. That was the spell in your head. Yeah. And? Well, you felt. Pray to one of the classic blunders. You listen to the spell. You know, the voice that said, turn around, but it was not very convincing. It was pretty convincing. Well, to you, because you're a weak-willed individual that, you know, gets goaded into following the will of others. But... All right, she gets an advantage on her save now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She glares at John and her hair sort of like static arcs directly up, pointing towards him. You're welcome. Yes. I didn't course. mean a word of it. Any no. winks at her? Obviously not. Now you could be angry. All right. Give me one moment to make some adjustments. John turns to Asena. Imagine if we'd have all listened and just left and never came back. I know. Is that how these things work? That would have been wild. I mean, eventually we'd figure it out and come back, but at least, you know, for now, that would have been incredibly annoying. Would we? Would it be like, you know, like um, when you go in a room and you forgot why you went in the room? And then you have to leave the room so that way you could remember. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's the thing I was doing. The walk back in the room. It's more like somebody sticks an idea in your head that you think is your idea and then you go do it. Exactly. Like sometimes John has bad ideas. Hey, you wouldn't you wouldn't understand, Asana. You only have good ideas. Um, but sometimes John has bad ideas that just slip into his head. 
I, even I have had it from time to time. Speaking of which, um, Mr. Lowe's dead, right? Very dead. Roll insight yeah. checks, both of you, please. There is a hungry gleam in Hara's eye. Crap, did we not verify this was actually Hara before we came down here? You didn't happen to find his, um, his hoard, did you? Okay, I see where this is going, but now John having a weird inkling. Mm hmm. Oh, Wait we didn't minute. even get to steal his dragon blood. No. I, I'm... I mean brains. Dragon brains. Unfortunate. But Hara, what happened? Uh, and John is going... I, I don't have the, the kind of brain for this, but John mm -hmm. does. John is mm -hmm. going to literally to the year, month, and day. Uh, he's going to ask her what happened on that day when... A blue dragon known as Akathisinian attacked a wayward uh, star jammer, a uh, spell jammer on the Desert Sebastian. Well, John, the dragon was resisted by the crew, their firearms and weapons, and the wizard on board, you, used a web spell to drop the dragon to the deck where. Uh, she could not defend herself against the attackers. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Um, Hara, why are you interested in that creature's horde? <clears throat> Do you have any idea how much wealth is just lying out there somewhere that could tip the entire balance of power in Northport? This it's is not, not just lying, though. Then where is it? It... Gaston and Edelvina are going to need that in order to change the Triple Union Society into a force of good in Northport. Lowe's wealth wasn't just his own, it was the entirety of that organization. Have you seen it, though? I, I, I didn't make a point of looking for it, no. I mean, it's probably in his but house. I trust that it's... Okay, that's, that's fine. Do you want a piece? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> well, I am very certain if you go back to Edelvina and to Gaston, set up a meet with them, probably go to dinner, bring a date. Um, they're really into that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure that you can get a, uh, a cut. You've been a part of all of this. And you, much like they will be going to, are only doing good. Heck, you and Opal's institution is basically one of the big factions in Northport right now. Unofficially. Mm -hmm. So... You would only do good with that. And speaking of which, by the way, do you have your own horde? I never really asked that. No, John, I don't. Okay. John reaches into his pack and takes out 5,000 gold and hands it to her. Okay, 5,000 gold weighs like 100 pounds. It's it's in my bag of holding, my <laughs> case of carrying. I, I, dude, you know how much stuff I've got in my case of carrying? Maybe later. Oh, right. We should get you one of those. But, like, when, when that gold comes out, she... She is not looking respectfully. <laughs> we'll resolve that issue. Trust me, I should have done this a long time ago, and you deserve it. So, you know, we'll... we'll let's take care of this. When we get back, this will be a... Yep. a like, yep. You know, All right. All right. Yep. startup. Yep. <laughs> yes, yes. Seed money. Yes, good. Exactly. A donation <laughs> to such a wonderful organization. Anyway... She she brushes off her coat, the hunger sort of having subsided, and uh, the lot of you step into... Uh, I'm going to close the door because my cat is yelling. I don't hear a cat. While we're waiting for that, I like it. I think I find it funny how, like, John has been, like, so poor in Northport for so long, but it's because he's running around with just oodles of gold and not, like, you know, Northport bucks. <laughs> he has very few Northport bucks, but a ton of actual, like, gold. Apparently, I have gold. There's numbers up here. I gave you a ton. You should have a bunch <laughs> of gold. <laughs> All right. 
you step into an enormous subterranean chamber beneath the very streets of Northport, the sloshing of stale water. It seems that the actual sewage outflows of the city do not reach this place. Instead, old water flows at a constant pace up ahead of you. You cannot see the far end of this chamber, but you can tell it is illuminated and you are not alone down here. You can hear muffled conversations, bits and pieces of singing, some small arguments going on. And as you step around the corner, in the shadows are lurking a wide variety of panhandlers, winos, beggars, con artists, people of the streets who stop what they're doing immediately as soon as you broach their sanctum. Do they look aggressive? Uh, they are, yes. They are forming ranks against you. Like, some of them are, some of them are just scrambling into the shadows. Some others are, like, sort of walking up, putting on their tough, tough guy attitude. You're not supposed to be here. They aren't saying anything yet. They're just standing there menacingly. John reaches up and just turns on the, uh, radio, considering he's right next to the two of them. Uh, they're not constructs or... I'm dead. <laughs> Thank you, John. Duly noted. Hey, uh, why those beggars and vagrants of all varieties? Just know, and John opens his coat, I have an extremely big gun. <laughs> John points back to Asena. She has an even bigger gun. A bigger John gun. John points over to <laughs> a better gun. Uh, and. That one. And then he that one, and then he points over to uh, to Hara, and she's a school teacher that can literally rip your head off. I suggest you let us move on, so we can entreat with your king. If not, and John turns on his dragon fear, hitting 120 feet in the area every single person who's not. 120 feet. <laughs> yep, and he hits every single person down here that isn't Bar! one of his friends. Okay. So Sheesh. I would like you to make a whole bunch of wisdom saving throws, my yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or you could just say during the scene, this cool thing happens, and uh, that's I can make what an intimidation That's kind of what I'm going with. Okay. Would you okay. like me to make an intimidation check? No, you just go ahead and swing for the fences with the dragon fear. Yep. Uh, and they back away, horrified. What would the lot of you like to do? Cow, you can see everybody. <laughs> up ahead, there is a... The bridge is out, and there is a 30-foot gap in between. Asena, you can jump that without making a check. Yeah, um, she doesn't even, like, Steve. Can she, she bring me along her with her? <laughs> she cannot bring you along with her. That's uh, That would require a check. What? I, I wear next to nothing compared to her burly arms. I think that'd be fine, right? right. Jude, are you at all aware of how physics works? This isn't As physics. This is D and D. All right. So Asena, are you go? Are you running it down mid? Yeah. All right. Asena runs it down mid. Um, John, Hara looks at you. She jerks her head to the right and she starts walking to the left. Okay. John follows along. Well, he doesn't follow along, but he. I'm just gonna make up what she's throwing. Hara down. controllable by the casters and castles account so that I can move her on screen. Sounds good. A little bit more easily. All right. So uh, does this go up somewhere, by the way? Is this area up here? Up? This catwalk? The catwalk just goes to the far end of the place, essentially. John's going to follow the catwalk. Okay. We'll all kind of stay in the high ground. Yep. And Hara walks along the other side, just sort of not paying attention to anybody. So now Asena's in the middle. The two of you, there's some winding passageways here in the middle of the place. And you can Is there anything all... in these crypts we're passing? These these uh, sarcophagi? No, nah, it does look like a sarcophagus. These do look like burial places. Um, but they don't look like they've been occupied for a long, long time. This is high ground, and it goes right back to low ground. This chamber is enormous. Hara uh, does not want to walk through the gunk, so she's going to walk down this bridge in the middle. Oh, there's gunk down here? Yeah, that's water. You're walking around. You're sloshing around in water down there. Uh, I think John, is... uh, before he enters the water, oh, go ahead, Pods. 
I think we passed 120. 120 feet? Yeah. yeah so now there's a crowd of people following you. That is, again, a good indicator, uh, Asena. You didn't get everybody in here. But John you got enough to be allowed in. This guy. He grabs this guy closest to him. Mm-hmm. Just kind of, not roughly, but just kind of getting his attention, points over to the water. Mm-hmm. Anything bad in there? Giant alligators? Are you sure? <laughs> we, we haven't seen Big Stu for months. And uh, okay. we're eating people in Aylbrook now. Yep. <laughs> Taking them out of the, the canals. Big old but is there? But is there anything else in there? If I walk through there, is something going to happen to me other than a wet shoe? I put fluoride in the water. Understandable. Have a nice See, day. See, I told John's you. Just kind of... <laughs> it's his cheek a bit, and John's going to walk through the water. All right. Splash, splash, splash. At the I far... We were... Go ahead. She's just mumbling to herself that, like, why did he go through the fluoride? <laughs> Asena, you'd be in position to go in first if you want. Uh just because you move so much faster than Hara, she'd be behind. I'm you. not going in the water. Yeah, but you can walk across this bridge right here. And then that bridge oh, gets okay. you to safety. So yeah. Hara would be behind you unless you stop. Oh, okay. I, mean, I can keep going, but yeah. Right. Shh. Don't bother me. <laughs> I'm a ninja. Don't bother me. I'm eating. <laughs> At the very far, far, far end, a brilliant light shines directly behind this throne. Wired up electric lights piped in and just like stealing power from some grid up there shines, casting this figure in silhouette. The only thing that you can see clearly is a silver coin that he's flicking up and down as it reflects the glimmering light. Nate, I was going to ask you about this before, but uh-huh. since we've been, uh, John's been trying to kind of, you know, reassess his own uh, power levels and what he's able to attain. Mm-hmm. And he's been spending his evenings, aside from making tattoos and, and uh, smell items for people, trying to reassess his uh his techno powers which mm-hmm. he did learn uh by tapping into his magical potential and though he wasn't able to call upon them since he's lost his magic he's trying to see if he can ever get them to re-function since he should still have they're still there they're just not power working the way that, yeah they're right. not powered correctly so he's right. he's trying to find out if there's other ways where he can kind of tap into himself in order to power some of these features and so just as an afterthought, he kind of reaches up and is going to try to see if he can manipulate the light behind uh, mm. Cassius. For a point of inspiration, the answer is yes. For a point of inspiration. Nothing else? It has to be inspiration? Mm-hmm. At this point, that's the only source that you'd have that would power that. Okay, John John is going to try to use a pulse. He's, I'm not going to spend the inspiration, but he's going to try mm-hmm. to activate pulse, which okay. is a localized EMP. The light flickers and sparks, and one of the bulbs goes out. The other one remains intact. So it okay. sparks over Cassius' shoulder and Cassius jerks to the side. Uh, the light no longer casting him quite in relief. Not, not as much. John has just the hint of a smile uh, mm-hmm. across the side of his face. All right. Asena, what do you do as the three of you roll up? Uh... Nothing. Okay. (laughs) Guests in my court. Pleasant. Pleasant. Yes. Uh, Here to... Probably not here to pay tribute, I'm guessing. Yes and no. John moves his hand kind of absentmindedly, having just activated his uh, ability, at least in part, to... Mm -hmm. It mess with the lights behind him. He says a couple of words under his breath, and as he gestures his hands, uh, a magical circle is created at his feet that rises up, and as it moves up, it clears the muck from his shoes and his pants and mm-hmm. puts him back to his pristine and dry cleaned self once more. Rolling. Just kind of flexing on Cassius a bit. Insight check, please. Yes. 
Uh, 29. Okay. He's not impressed. And he's not... Oh, I've never seen this power before, but he is... Hmm. Hmm. That's concerned. He knows what I'm doing, or at least he, he has an idea of what's He's happening. concerned, yes. He's concerned by that. Does wow. he seem to recognize that this is... Or can John ascertain, does he seem to recognize that this is magic and that he, it's not just a power? He recognizes it. That's all you get from his eyes. Okay. Even with the okay. 29, he can't get down to that level of granular detail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'd love to hear more about the yes part. John looks to his companions. Shall we? Shall we what? And John's going to go ahead and move up. All right. These two goons move down to block you. How about the, uh, the gentleman next to him? Scrambles out of the way. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. He'll uh he'll step up right to these uh these goons right in front of him. Mm-hmm. Asena will join him by his side, so, but like in a in a swagger type of walk. Okay. Cool. By walk. The way, not, not like the badass. Not not the I'm going to beat you to death walk, but just the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you still in your tuxedo? By the way. No. Oh, we're not wearing the top. You changed back into your adventuring gear. Okay, cool. Forgot to touch on that while I was at my house, but um, Asena would have taken it off mm-hmm. uh, as sort of like a parting tribute to Gaston. Like, mm-hmm. we'll take care of this and we'll we'll see this later. And went back it, to her normal outfit. Did you outfit. leave it there or did, she, did you sell it on you? No, it's in my closet. At home. All right, so these guys immediately walk up to you threateningly as you approach the throne. Asena casually swaggering her way up. John, uh, Hara following up behind, completely unconcerned, even though they have guns, by the way. They don't just Ooh. have uh, bats. bats. Okay. They are okay. also armed with pistols and knives. Pistols, okay, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh oh. Two foes who find themselves, who threaten each other, find themselves inside oh. each other's reach. They oh, are hello. now grappling. Are we so, considered foes at this point? Wait, who's grappling who? <laughs> uh, t- two foes who are in close proximity. So they have to be enemies. So you and John are not suddenly randomly grappling each other. Oh, I meant like the, the two thugs in front of us. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that they're. There's going to be some uh, some contact, okay, which is okay. going to be exacerbated as an oppressive, crushing will floods oh, no. into the chamber. We gotta get rid of this dude. I mean, this is this has gone on long enough. And the the innocent, <laughs> relatively innocent uh, bystanders, the commoners, the panhandlers, the winos, etc., they jolt upright. Their eyes roll into the back of their heads. Nobody is here to play the song that will free them from the power of Rousamon, Master of the Unknown. And we'll find out what happens when we come back from this short break. Don't go anywhere, folks. Coriander Society will return. (laughs) 